so I want to start my talk today with a uh, question to kind of get the wheels turning a little bit. The question is, how can kites, crates, and calligraphy create the next innovation? You might be saying, okay, kites, calligraphy, how do those fit together with business and innovation? We'll get back to this answer later on and I'll kind of address that. So a lot of things, a lot of, a lot of mentors of mine, a lot of business professionals have always, always told me niche equals rich. It's something that's kind of nailed into our heads in business school. But something I've realized a little bit more recently is that while niche might be rich, I think it's experiences that make us wealthy. And so although you're, you're niche and you're in your field and you're kind of head down, I think it's the people who are, have a breadth of knowledge from a lot of different experiences that are actually going to become wealthy. I think what we're seeing is a rise of idea pollinators. There are people that are able to take learnings from across multiple, uh, multiple different industries and tie them together into one idea or problem solve through uh, different industries. So I think people um, who pollinate ideas are actually the people who are most effective in business and are the most creative. So what is idea pollination? Idea pollination is what happens is when you look at a different subculture, take a learning from that industry, and infuse it with your own. So by combining unlike ideas, I think we actually see the most positive and the most amazing change. And I think it's always really powerful. You can see the world as a big bag of ingredients. I think when you start to look through this lens of everything can be pieced together, everything can be added and subtracted, you'll see an amazing amount of opportunities open to you. You know, the suitcase plus wheels, that made someone a millionaire. The iPod the phone. So everything you look at, I think you can take it and say, what if I piece this together with something else that may, maybe wouldn't normally fit with it? What if we put a horse and a fish together and made a seahorse? And I think sometimes it, it's not always the most effective, but when it does work, it's extremely powerful. So I want to talk about a few real-world examples that have happened um, that have made amazing results. So Coca-Cola partnered up with a nonprofit. Coca-Cola, a capitalistic company, and a nonprofit, some, something that's the exact opposite, opposite of that. And they actually saved lives in rural areas. The way they did that was they realized that in the Coca-Cola crates they've been shipping to all these rural areas around the country, um, there was extra space between the bottles. And so what they found was that if they put these vitamins in the Coca-Cola crates that were already being shipped to these rural areas, um, they were able to save a lot of lives. I think calligraphy can lead to tech innovation. If anybody's read the Steve Jobs bio, you know that it was actually the class in calligraphy that he took that led him to some of the innovation in the Mac. And so he's famously said, none of, these, uh, none of this had any application in my life, but 10 years later, when we were designing the first Macintosh computer, it all came back to me. So it actually ended up being that classic calligraphy that pushed forward innovation on the Mac. I think paper kites can save people from landmines. There's a city in uh, Afghanistan, in Kabul, and they're plagued by landmines. Uh, a lot of people there have lost limb, people have died, and uh, there's actually an industrial designer who went to that city to solve this issue. What he noticed was there was little kids playing in the fields and in the deserts making kites out of paper. And these kites would blow across the desert with the wind. And so by taking this learning from what the kids were doing for fun, he actually made kites that were a lot larger and a lot heavier to disrupt these landmines. And so that's an example of how something so different, kites and landmines, can be tied together to create lasting change. So really it's the kites, calligraphy, and uh, Coca-Cola crates of the world that are creating the most innovation. So how can you become an idea pollinator? Well, the first thing I think you can do is look to different subcultures. Look to niche groups that are doing things that are very different than yourself. And I think if you can take a piece of that idea and infuse it with what you're doing, I think that's where the real inspiration comes from. I think you can push to the edges of your network. It's not the, it's not the close ties that you have. It's not your, your network that you're always talking with. It's actually the people on the fringes of your network that are doing the most innovation and have new ideas that you're not really used to and not accustomed to. I think you can find people who are opposite from you and learn from them. It's Coca-Cola, the most capitalistic company in the, in the world, pairing up with a nonprofit that's doing something completely different. Or it's the kite and the uh, landmine that are completely different that when fused together create amazing innovation. So if there's one thing I want to, you all to take away from this talk, it's that I think when you juxtapose two things that are completely different together, or if you take ideas from different industries, I think you can infuse them in whatever project you're building, and I think it'll create an amazing uh, change. So go out and find new experiences and talk to new people because I think you'll find wealth both professionally and personally. And when the currency of the world is ideas, I think it's these pollinators, these people that can tie together different things from different industries together, they're going to be increasingly